वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल मेडिकल क्लासेस बाय डॉक्टर श्रीनिधि कुमार आचार्य डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल एंड आल्सो प्लीज गिव योर वैल्यूबल कमेंट्स एंड यू कैन आल्सो विजिट दी द प्लेलिस्ट इन द प्लेलिस्ट आई हैव प्रोवाइडेड ऑल द टॉपिक्स इन अ वेरी सिस्टमेटिक फैशन एंड इट इज़ क्वाइट कन्वीनियंट फॉर द स्टडी ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड नाउ वी विल स्टार्ट टूडेज टॉपिक So my dear friends uh, today onwards we will start a series of lectures which is related to fertilization and as well as fetal development this is quite important it is also important for the exam purpose and also for the clinical purpose so understanding the core concepts of this fertilization and as well as fetal development is quite important so in this series today we will have the first class now the question comes what you mean by fertilization okay see fertilization is a coordinated molecular and cellular process which actually begins with the contact of oocyte and the sperm and it ends with the intermingling of maternal and paternal chromosomes at the metaphase of the first meiotic division of the zygote this is the actual definition of fertilization so what i mean to say is fertilization is a coordinated process it is not a random process rather it is a coordinated process coordinated molecular and as well as cellular process there are so many molecular uh, process taking place there are so many cellular processes are taking place okay so when it begins it begins as soon as the sperm touches the oocyte it begins as soon as the sperm touches the oocyte <coughs> inside the female genital tract and this ends with the intermingling of the genetic material of the oocyte with the genetic material of the sperm okay so intermingling of uh, the maternal and paternal chromosomes that is genetic material at which phase of the is uh, mitotic division metaphase of the first mitotic division of the zygote so in the zygote in the metaphase of the first mitotic division in the zygote of the zygote this particular process will go into end then we will call it as fertilization i mean to say that once the the genetic material of the sperm and genetic material of the oocyte they come in together and they intermingle and then they start their action okay so next to cell division so then it is in the phase of the metaphase it is called as zygote okay so zygote is nothing but it is unicellular embryo zygote is a single cell just like other cells zygote is also a single cell it is unicellular okay it contains 23 pairs of chromosomes from the paternal side and 23 um, um, 23 chromosomes from the paternal side and 23 chromosomes from the maternal side so in total that is 23 pairs okay so simply we can say it is mixing of the male and female gametes in other words to say it is nothing but mixing of male and female gametes now uh in fertilization when we look forward the common most site of a fertilization is ampulla of the fallopian tube in the fallopian tube there is a ampulla everybody knows and that ampulla is the most common site of the <coughs> fertilization now first part of the fallopian tube is called as infundibulum okay so infundibulum ending contains some of the fimbrias there are some fimbrias which are present in the end portion of this infundibulum this fimbria actually shows some smooth movements over the ovary uh, so that it can catch the ovum what actually happens is ovary is not inside the uh, uterus we know that it is outside in the abdominal cavity so this fimbria which is the extension of this infundibulum so that it has got finger like structures so these finger like structures now what actually they go on doing a very smooth movement over the ovary over the ovary Uh, so that as soon as the oocyte comes out ovum come out okay ovum ovum come out it can catch it now we know that ovum actually travels very less infundibulum containing fimbria fimbria now catches the ovum from the ovary and then it is taken inside the fallopian tube and reaches the uh, ampulla portion that's all ovum travels very very less as an individual ovum travels very less zygote may travel that is a different issue but ovum will travel very less and ovum is almost all immotile ovum is always uh, almost all immotile so at the time of the ovulation what actually happens is now ovulation at 
just to begin so at the time of the ovulation some fluid is expelled out on the surface of the ovary okay so some fluid is expelled out on the outer portion of the ovary during the time of the ovulation okay and some of the cells in the outermost area of this ovary are get rearranged and this rearranged cells of the ovary so they are called as corona radiata so they are called as corona radiata now around the time of ovulation around the time of the ovulation 14th day or 15th day or 16th day around the time of the ovulation the fimbria uh, become more active previously also it is having some smooth uh, uh, the smooth movements over the ovary but during the time of the ovulation the fimbria becomes more and more active and it is now it is now start sweeping more and more over the surface of the ovary previously also it is touching the ovary but as the ovulation nears so what actually happens is this fimbria will show more and more this sweeping movements over the surface of the ovary so usually at the time of the ovulation there will be some bulge at the area of ovary from where actually <coughs> the ovulation takes place that means ovum will come out there is a small bulge now fimbria sweeps very much over that area where there is a bulge so where there is a little bulge it sweeps more and catch hold the ovum and rightly as soon as it is come out it is directly catch hold of the ovum and directly transport it into the infundibulum <coughs> and from the infundibulum now infundibulum uh, how it catch hold because actually uh, how this the uh, sweeping movement takes place because the fimbria they contain ciliated epithelium the fimbria they contain ciliated epithelium therefore this sweeping will be quite easier now once the fimbria catch hold this ovum now this is transported into the infundibulum inside taken inside directly now fallopian tube also produce some of the fluid uh, uh, during that time and which helps to catch that means fimbrial surface fimbria contains columnar epithelial cells the fimbrial surface also produce some amount of the fluid so that actually helps to catch hold of this ovum directly into the trim, uh, fimbria okay so now this will be uh, this is how actually the ovum releases the ovary releases the ovum and uh, fimbria directly catch hold of this ovum and take it inside the infundibulum and from the infundibulum now it comes to the um, ampulla okay so now although we are explaining it very uh, uh, in a very easy way actually this is a hormonally controlled phenomena okay this whole process is a hormonally controlled phenomena because estrogen and luteinizing hormone so these two are the very important hormones which plays in this particular ovulation okay progesterone is important for the maintenance of the pregnancy and further growth whereas estrogen and luteinizing hormone so they are very important in the process of uh, ovulation now this uh, the ovum which is catch hold by the fimbria and now taken inside the ampulla okay inside the infundibulum and ampulla so this particular ovum is actually called as a secondary ovum okay so why it is called a secondary ovum because <coughs> it is still undergoing the division actually okay second mitotic division is not till happened so only the primary mitotic division has been taken taken place so therefore uh, primary meios, uh, meiotic division has been taken place so therefore it is called as a secondary ovum secondary ovum it is not called as primary ovum okay so definitive ovum it is not called as definitive ovum it is just called as a secondary ovum so definitive ovum is produced when the sperm touches it when sperm come and touches the ovum so that time actually ovum is called as second uh, definitive definitive ovum okay so if not sperm touch suppose okay so when there is no pregnancy taking place if there is no sperm to touch okay so if no terms a sperm touches then the secondary ovum which is so far produced will be destroyed within 24 hours okay there is no pregnancy everything is clear so there is no pregnancy and it will be clear so sperm will so sperm survive but sperm can survive for minimum 20 uh, 48 hours uh, in the female genital tract but it is not the case with the ovum ovum will uh, only survive for 24 hours if there is no fertilization so this will be the first part of fertilization and in the next class onwards we will see the next part of this fertilization thank you very much